the spotlight today, feature spotlight for QuickBooks Online. We're going to be going over um, payroll with myself, and then we have Cliff Mitchell from ClockShark, who's a third-party application that integrates with QuickBooks Online. He'll be joining us and talking about his um, application in about uh, half an hour or so. So the first option, um, payroll-wise, that we do provide for QuickBooks Online is our enhanced payroll, or what we like to call do-it-yourself. So it does support all 50 states. You do have the ability to print paychecks or use our free direct deposit service for your W-2 employees. You also do have the ability to pay your federal 941s and your 944s and your 940 tax and file forms electronically. You can pay state taxes and file forms electronically where they are available. And then uh, multi-state support. So if you guys do have um, employees that are out of the state, we do support that as well. It is $12 per uh, additional state. There's no tax impounding. Employees can view their pay stubs online at our, at our uh, sister site called View My Paycheck. Um, you do have the ability to create W-2s and file electronically at year end. And it's accessible from a browser, an iPad, iPhone, or even an Android. And if you guys are a part of our QuickBooks Online accountant, um, it, it, it is available for a wholesale discount through QBOA. The other action that we have that's available is our full service. So this is do it for you. So Intuit will do everything payroll-wise, right? So we do submit um, your client. So you or your client, depending on who runs the payroll, we're going to submit the payroll, but then we file and pay those taxes on your guys' behalf. We, um, we have expert help during your guys' setup, so there's no um, errors for W-2 employees. Local tax forms are included. There's no tax penalties. It's a guarantee. So if anything happens or there's a boo-boo, <laughs> I like to call them, we guarantee those. You guys don't have to pay for anything. Uh, no tax impounding as well. Accuracy is guaranteed, accessible from a browser, iPad, iPhone, or Android. And this is also available through wholesale discount through QBOA, if you guys are familiar with QuickBooks Online account. And uh, lastly, before we, we, we actually jump into the product itself, um, just kind of talking a little bit about how the payroll data flows through QBO. So the payroll product is actually embedded in QuickBooks Online. You guys don't already know. And so um, the data only moves in one direction. All payroll activity should be done inside the payroll tab. So when you go to write a check or a bill payment or a journal entry or anything like that, those don't flow through the payroll module. So just keep in mind that um, if you're doing anything that's going to be payroll related, you're going to want to do those inside of the, inside the payroll modules. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. So um, as you can see, when I click on employees on the left-hand side, we have our employee section here. Now the payroll's already been set up. So um, we're not going to be going through any setup process. If you guys need any further information about that, let me know, and we can uh, move that offline. But um, this, so this employee, uh, this, this payroll has already been set up. <clears throat> As you can see, we have a list of all of the employees that are currently being run for this particular company. If you guys are looking to see maybe inactive employees or all the employees, you can change the filter here. Adding a new employee is pretty simple. Um, clicking on the Add an Employee section uh, box, excuse me, it will take you through a step-by-step -step procedure on how to fill in their information or what it is that the payroll company needs in order to, to, to run payroll for them. So uh, the first thing it's going to start off with is, is your pay up here at the top. It's going to ask you for their first name and their last name. It's going to ask you for W-4 information, how often they're paid, how much do you pay this particular employee, does this employee have any deductions, and how do you want to pay this employee. So we're going to go through really quickly and enter this information. So um, how often do you pay John? Um, the, the default one here is going to be bi-weekly. How much do you pay John? Let's just say he gets paid $15 an hour. And um, if John has any deductions, example, retirement or health care, um, you can absolutely add those here by clicking this pencil icon. And then how do you want to pay John? So if you're looking to pay John by paper check or by direct deposit, if you have it set up, you can absolutely change that here. Please keep in mind that in order for, um, in order for John to get paid by direct deposit, it is something you do have to set up. It does take a couple of days because we want to verify that that bank account is something you have access to. So direct deposit is absolutely something that is available for you guys to do, but you will have to set it up. Once you have all that information entered, you can go over to the profile section, and it just asks for basic stuff like home address, the city, state, zip code, email address if you want. Um, 
this would allow them to be able to access their uh, pay stubs online if they want to do that. And then um, phone numbers. Um, gender is something that is required within the online payroll system. Birth date is also required. Once you're done filling out the, uh, the profile, you can fill out their employment information. So if they have an employee ID, you can enter it here, their status. Um, this is just for your guys' records. If you filed a new hire report or if you sorted a completed Form I-9 in your files, those kinds of things. And then hire date, birth date. Work location, if you guys are using multiple locations. And then um, workers' comp class, if that is something you guys are using. Pretty easy stuff. Once you're done creating your employee, they'll show up down here um, under the active employees. Now, John does have an, um, a yellow exclamation point because I didn't fill in all of that information. So I'm not going to be able to pay John until I get that information filled in. So if you ever see that over there, that's what that's for. But since I don't have all of that information available right now at this time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to run a payroll for all the other employees for now. So pretty simple. The big uh, green run payroll option is in the upper right-hand corner. If you want to do something like a bonus only, you absolutely can by clicking on the caret icon and then cho choosing bonus only. When I, click, uh, when I click the run payroll option, you're going to get this screen here. Now, if you have more than one pay schedule, so let's say some folks get paid on a monthly basis or some folks get paid on a biweekly basis, you will get a screen prior to this one stating, hey, which schedule do you want to run? Once you've selected the schedule that you want to run, this is the next screen that you'll get. As you can see, I still can't run payroll for John because I don't have all the information available yet, so I can't check this box. But <clears throat> you'll notice that any salaried employees are going to be located in the first column here, and then any regular pay employees are going to be located in the next column over. It's a simple matter of just entering in their payroll information in these boxes. We also do have time tracking that is available in Essentials or Plus. So if you do have folks that are using time tracking, they can use, use that, and those um, times entries will automatically be entered into these particular boxes depending on the pay period. But it's just a matter of entering in that information um, as needed. If they have any sick time that they used or vacation, you can enter all that information. Um, depending on how many different columns you have, you may have to scroll over if you're looking for more information. So if you're needing to enter in a memo or if you're needing to adjust this total pay, you can click on the pencil icon to the far right of this employee. When I click on this pencil icon, it's going to give me a breakdown of this particular employee's paycheck. So um, right now I have them set for 80 hours to be paid out at $25 an hour. So their uh, gross pay is going to be $2,000. And so it kind of gives you that breakdown of, of um, how much they're getting paid. You have the ability to, to edit some stuff if you need to. So um, employee taxes. If there's a, a change you need to make to their federal income tax for this one time, you can absolutely do that here. So if they're asking for you to change the amount, you can absolutely do that. Social Security and Medicare cannot be changed because those are fixed rates. So those are not editable, but you can with the income tax and the federal income tax. So if there's a, a, a change or an adjustment that you need to make on the fly for this one particular payroll, you can absolutely do that. You can also see a breakdown of their deductions. So this particular employee has workers' compensation and health insurance. You can absolutely change those on the fly if you need to. And then if you're looking or curious for an employer taxes uh, breakdown or company pay contributions breakdown, you can absolutely uh, look at that information. Those boxes aren't editable, but if you ever need um, assistance with getting those fixed or, or there's something wrong with them, you can absolutely give us a call and we can help you out with that. But once you're done looking at the breakdown, you can click OK. And then you can, um, and, 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 and of course, you know, with every other employee, if everything looks good, right? So this is the bank account that the money is going to be coming out of in QuickBooks Online. This is your pay period, and this is the pay date. Once all of that looks good, you can preview payroll. And it's just going to give you um, a breakdown of all of the monies, the, the total payroll cost, and um, everybody's gross pay versus net. Now, I do have everybody set for paper checks. Since this is a test company, direct deposit is not turned on. However, um, I'm going to go back just really quickly, and I'm going to show you. If you do have direct deposit turned on, you will notice that this little credit card icon, you can click 
and you can change it from direct deposit to paper check. So if they're needing to get a paper check one time um, and they, they, they don't want to turn direct deposit off completely, you can absolutely toggle um, that pay by on the fly here. Um, but since it's a test company, direct deposit's not turned on, so that's not an option as of right now. But you can absolutely turn it on for your client. So five paper checks for the, the total um, gross amount here. Once you verify that everything looks good for this particular payroll that's been run, you can click Submit Payroll. Once the payroll's been submitted, you can print the pay stubs here, or uh, you can also print them out, uh, the checks, to, to, to give to your employees. Um, if you want to autofill check numbers, you absolutely can. You just enter in the number and then just hit autofill, and it'll move. Uh, it'll autofill the rest. Once you're done, you can click Finish Payroll. Payroll has just been successfully run for uh, the 14th. So that next payroll that was due was Friday 7-14. I do have a question from Ken. How do I change from liability account to expense account? So you must be talking about the, the actual accounting piece of it, Ken, right? So um, we'll go into the settings here in just a second. So. Um, that's how you run payroll. We're going to go and we're going to be able to look at the, the, the settings. So if you're wanting to update or change any information, let's look at that now. So if we go to the gear icon in the upper right-hand corner and then we go to payroll settings under your company, this is where you're going to be able to set up a lot of the electronic stuff. So if you're wanting to pay and file your forms electronically, Update Electronic Services is going to be located here. If you're needing to update any tax information, let's say your EIN was entered incorrectly or you need to update your California state tax account number, you can do all of that information here. Um, if there's any local tax jurisdictions, you can update that information here as well. Now, uh, what Ken was talking about was the accounting preferences. So now that you've run payroll, you must be thinking, well, where did all that information go, right? Um, it's going to be located under these preferences. So. Uh, accounting preferences is going to show you where all the information went. Um, now, unfortunately, you don't have the ability to change the liability account to an expense account. It has to stay at a liability level. Um, you can use a journal entry to move it if you want, um, but uh, you won't be able to actually change it inside these preferences here. Um, the bank account that the money is going to be coming out of in the check register, you can update it here. And then um, things like wage expense accounts or company contribution expense uh, expense accounts and your tax expense accounts, this is where you would be able to update and edit any of that information. If you're using QuickBooks Online Plus, you have the ability to choose uh, classes, adding classes to your uh, transactions if you choose. So if you use different classes for different employees, you can click that radio button and when I click OK, the next screen is going to show me where I can uh, class those specific employees. Um, and then you'll be able to move them to whatever class that you would like. Please keep in mind that is available for only QuickBooks Online Plus, since Plus is the only one that does class tracking. Once you've entered or, or edited this information and you click OK, it's just going to give you a basic rundown of all of the accounts that you have uh, listed when you go to run payroll and what's going to hit what. Now at the very bottom, do you want to update existing transactions? You can absolutely do that. So if there's anything that maybe was in the wrong account, you can move them if you choose by changing the starting date and then hitting this update button. Please keep in mind that this does not change the bank account the payroll was ran out of. So if you're needing to change the bank account, you can either delete and recreate the payroll or you can use a journal entry to move that money. So this is the only thing it won't change is the bank account. But once your preferences have been updated, Moving forward, everything is going to move into the right account that you just moved it to. Now, paying and filing forms um, inside, uh, paying taxes and filing forms inside of QuickBooks Online is pretty easy as well. Um, if we go over here to taxes on the left-hand side, and then payroll tax up here at the top, this is where you're going to see all of the items that are going to be due. So when I go to click the pay taxes, You'll notice anything that's in red is a due date that's passed, and then anything in um, black is something that's going to be coming up very soon. So as you can see, this California um, per, uh, income tax here is going to be due on the 17th, which is really soon. Recording a payment is really easy. If you have electronic services turned on and you click record payment, 
there will be a box that shows that it will say that it's um, automatically getting uh, uh, paid electronically. Keep in mind, if this payment is due, um, I'm sorry, if the payment is overdue, you won't be able to pay it electronically through QuickBooks Online. You would have to do it outside the system and then still mark the, the payment as recorded inside of QBO so that um, the, it is still showing that you paid it um, if, it's, if it's overdue. If it's not overdue, then you can still pay it through us. Um, but this is what it looks like once you've um, once you verify that the amount is correct. You can hit the record payment button. Like I said, if it is set up for electronic services, it will tell you uh, there's a box that you can check uh, that'll automatically be checked for you. Um, but it'll tell you a confirmation here, a manual payment method. Excuse me, the payment type, the liability period, the amount, and everything like that. You can view and print the form, or you can skip for now. And when I view and print the form, it's just going to show me the, the oh, my pop-up was blocked. Dun, 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 dun. When I click view uh, form, it'll, sh it'll show the, the coupon that you can send manually, right? So if, you've not, if you don't have electronic services set up, you can print that, that coupon. Filing your forms is also easy. Um, quarterly forms, uh, annual, these are going to be the two that are going to be the biggies for you guys. Let's take a look at quarterly forms. So this is a 941 company. When I click on the 941 option here, you'll notice that um, in order for me to be able to file this form, I have to record these payments first. Once I've recorded those payments, I can um, either file the form electronically or I can archive it. And that'll get rid of the, the overdue item that'll show on your homepage for this particular form that's due. So once these recorded, I'll be able to, to, to file those forms. It's pretty easy, though. Um, but you do have the ability to preview the form if you need to. And it'll show you all of the breakdowns for that quarter. So this is for second quarter. See here. All right, so this is for first quarter. So just to give you guys kind of an idea, um, so once you've made all of the, the payments for that particular quarter, You'll have, you'll have the ability to either view it or archive it. If it again, if you have e-services set up, the option to e-file it will show here. Um, archiving it is just going to get rid of it as, as an overdue item. So if you guys are familiar, if you go to the dashboard over here up at the top, you see how there's tasks that are showing as overdue? So I have four uh, forms that are showing as outstanding. So if you're wanting to get rid of those, and you're not filing electronically, you just have to go in there and hit the archive button. And the same goes for the taxes, the, the taxes that are due. Um, you have to either mark them as recorded or you um, enter in a historical tax. So just a high level overview of our payroll. Um, before I get Cliff on the phone and get it transferred over to Clockshark and show you guys what they can do, um, I just want to go over one more slide. Um, I do just want to quickly go over things that we don't support in online payroll. So um, this is considered a small business payroll option. So anything over 150 active employees, this payroll might not be a good option. Um, we don't support quarterly or annual pay schedules for employees. Um, we don't support owner's draws, uh, wage reductions, backing out wages, roaming employees, statutory employees. Um, addresses outside the U.S., including Guam and Puerto Rico. We do get that question a lot. Unfortunately, those are not supported. Um, allocated tips, so full service can be supported, um, but they may have additional fees if you're looking for allocated tips. Um, certified payroll, union dues, agricultural 943 businesses, um, PEO services or lease employees, and then public employee retirement systems. We don't support any of those. However, don't be, don't be sad because <laughs> Um, there are third-party payroll options out there that do integrate with QuickBooks Online so that you can import um, import data, such as a general ledger import, if that is an option for you. Um, I know ADP does that. So if there is something out there that we can't do, there are others out there that can. That's a high-level overview of our QuickBooks Online payroll. Um, I do know that there was another question asked really quick. Let me look. Um, paying independent contractors. So Alexa, no. Um, as of right now, our payroll module only allows direct deposit for W-2 employees, not for contractors. We are working on a beta for um, Bill.com to pay vendors electronically, 
but um, as of right now, contractors cannot be paid electronically through QuickBooks Online Payroll. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass the ball over to Cliff. Cliff, are you there? I am. Hey, Leah. How's it going today? Hi. It's going good. I'm going to make you presenter now, and you should be good to take over and show your screen. Okay, great. Well, hey, everybody. How's it going today? Um, thanks so much to Leah and Intuit for, for having me on. Really appreciate the opportunity. And uh, so what we're going to do today quickly, um, we've got a fun kind of shark trivia thing that I'm going to do for you guys real quick just to kind of spice things up and kick, kick it off. And then we'll go through a product demo and some slides. Um, so the goal here is to show you ClockShark and kind of show you what it can do for the front end of the payroll process. Of course, Leah um, showed us what QBO can do for us on the back end in terms of actually processing the payroll. So our part is the front in terms of tracking time and getting it into QBO. Uh, but first, uh, without further ado, we're very much about sharks here at ClockShark, uh, as you can imagine. So do a little bit of fun shark trivia. And the way this works is actually... Um, you guys can uh, put your answers into the uh, questions box uh, in the webinar, and we're going to uh, go through this uh, one question at a time, and I'll kind of show you how it works as we go. Um, so ClockShark's GPS time tracking and scheduling for companies with a mobile workforce. Uh, companies can save 2 to 8% on their payroll by using an electronic time tracking system, and that's according to a study done by the American Payroll Association. Okay, so we're going to be giving away today for this trivia a $15 gift card to Starbucks, and we're also going to send you a Clock Shark shirt. So we're going to do that for whoever gets closest on the answers. Um, so when we get into the questions here in a second, just again, just put your answers if you want to play along into the questions box in the webinar, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So let's meet our friends, the sharks. So first we have the dusky shark, then we have the whale shark, and the blue shark. And here's the trivia. So again, whoever gets the most questions right or is closest is going to win the gift card and the shirt. Now put your phones away, no cheating, because I know everybody wants to go to Google first thing when we put this up. N none of that. So the first question is how heavy is the dusky shark? How heavy is the dusky shark? Next question is how much does a whale shark weigh? And the third question is how long is a blue shark? So go ahead and put your answers into the question box. How heavy is a dusky shark? How much does a whale shark weigh? And how long is a blue shark? All right, everybody got your answers? Go ahead and type them in. All right, everybody got your answers in? All right, here comes the answers. So how heavy is a dusky shark? The answer is 370 pounds. How much does a whale shark weigh? The answer is 7,200 pounds. That's a big shark. And how long is a blue shark? Seven feet long. Okay? So we'll go through at the end and figure out who the winner is afterward. Ready for the next round? One more round. How much does payroll fraud cost businesses globally per year, per week, and per minute? And this is according to the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. Per year, per week, and per minute. So this one's got three parts. How much does payroll fraud cost businesses globally? Okay, everybody got your answers? Go ahead and type them in. So here comes the answers to how much does payroll fraud cost per year? 3.7 trillion per year globally? That's a big number. How much does payroll fraud cost per week? 72 billion globally. And how much does payroll fraud cost per minute globally? $7 million per minute globally. Those are pretty, those are pretty big numbers. So again, we'll go through at the end and figure out who the winner is, and we'll get the gift card and shirt out. Oh, looks like we've got one bonus question here. What percentage of all companies are affected by payroll fraud? What percentage of all companies are affected by payroll fraud? You ready for the answer? Go ahead and type your, type your, uh, your answer into the question box. The answer is 30%. So if you have 10 clients, three of them are likely to experience payroll fraud. And one more bonus question just for fun. How long was the now extinct megalodon shark? There's the teeth. So there's the big megalodon tooth. And there next to it on the right is the puny great white tooth. So as you can see, the, the megalodon was a lot bigger. How long was the megalodon shark? And the answer is 50 feet on average. So that's a pretty big shark. 
And so the moral here is it's definitely better to have the sharks on your side. All right, so let me go ahead and that was fun. And I went through that pretty quick because we're kind of trying to uh, do the presentation in a little bit quicker than we normally do. So pardon going through things so quickly. Let me switch over to my other slide deck and we'll get this up on the screen. All right, so uh, what is ClockShark? All right, so a little bit about who we are. Uh, ClockShark is a fast-growing app. Uh, we do time tracking and scheduling for mobile workforces. And our mission is to replace paper timesheets and automate the workflow. Um, so it's no longer a time-consuming and expensive pain for your clients. Um, so we believe that you know, these businesses with mobile workforces are really hard to run since the staff is all over the place. Often they're lacking supervision and reporting. And um, so I used to run a construction business, so I know that this is true myself. And one of the things that I found to be the most costly, the most time consuming was using paper timesheets. So uh, our mission here at ClockShark is to make things easier on these businesses around their time tracking and scheduling. Um, and the way ClockShark works is that employees in the field clock in and out from easy, free mobile apps, and they can also view their schedules. Okay. Um, so we're a QuickBooks partner, obviously, too. Um, so we're fully integrated with QBO, and it's a two-way sync. And a little bit about me. My name's Cliff. I'm one of the co-founders here. Uh, so what I'm going to do today, again, is just show you a quick demo. Uh, I'll go through a few slides here, and then we'll jump into the product, um, show you the mobile apps, show you the connection to QBO, and all that good stuff. So which of your clients would be a good fit um, to get a lot of value and benefits from using ClockShark alongside QBO? Uh, we target small and mid-sized companies with mobile workforces. Uh, so when ClockShark first started out three years ago, the product was built specifically for construction and the trades. So if you do have any construction or trade clients like plumbers, uh, HVAC, landscapers, etc., then they are going to be right at home in ClockShark since it was built for them. Um, but we do service basically any business with a mobile workforce now. Okay. Uh, anywhere from a few employees on up to 100 employees or so is really the sweet spot of who the product is going to work best for. And we're currently working with thousands of companies. Uh, so just like McDonald's advertised millions of hamburgers sold, uh, there were over 1 million hours tracked on ClockShark last week alone. Okay. So um, since we're a QuickBooks app, our ideal customer obviously is going to be using QuickBooks for accounting uh, and payroll too. So there are a few things. Um, what makes us different? There's a few things that make ClockShark different from other time tracking apps on the market. Uh, these things make ClockShark the perfect choice for some of your clients, and we're not going to be the best fit for every single one of your clients. Okay? Uh, but first, first things first, we take a stand and we say that ClockShark is here to help your clients get rid of payroll fraud and the rounding that tends to run rampant with a paper timesheets process. Uh, this tends to be a really expensive problem that um, these business owners are very much aware of. Uh, if you talk to them about it, um, they're going to say, hey, yeah, paper timesheets is not something that is fun for them. <clears throat> so we've built everything from the ground up to be super easy to use and set up in ClockShark. And one thing we've heard over and over from these customers is that they want to replace paper timesheets with an app, but that it's got to be easy or the staff won't do it. So with ClockShark, we make it dead simple. Um, we're also big on job costing since uh, we originally targeted only construction in the trades. Uh, the job costing in ClockShark is very easy to set up, uh, it's robust, and it's basically ready to start using right out of the box. Uh, so we've also built a really clean user interface in the product, uh, which goes along with making it easy to use for your clients. Uh, there's a built-in scheduler. Uh, since we found that being able to schedule employees alongside the time tracking, uh, the two just kind of go hand in hand and it um, delivers a lot more value to them in terms of kind of automating things. Um, we also have a very sophisticated GPS tracking system uh, that has both a breadcrumb trail of activity. So you get um, locations for all of the punches, a breadcrumb trail of activity throughout the day while the employee is clocked in. Uh, and then you also um, now have geofencing in ClockShark for your clients, which means that the system knows if employees are on the right job site um, or if they're clocking in from somewhere that they shouldn't be, um, which tends to be a big problem uh, for these businesses, is kind of making sure that everybody is in the right place. We've also just released a feature called File Attachments, which allows employees to attach photos or other documents from their smartphone right to their timesheet. Um, it also allows people in the office to attach documents to specific customers or jobs. Um, so that employees working on that job in the field can access those documents on their phone. 
Um, and then, and I'll show you all that stuff once we jump into the product here in a second. Uh, finally, we've got some of the best pricing around, uh, which makes ClockShark an amazing value for your clients. Um, so they're going to get a lot of return on investment in using it. Um, we're a top-rated app on apps.com. So I don't know if you, if you guys are familiar with Intuit's um, app marketplace, but apps.com is a great place to go to find apps. Um, so we are listed there. Um, we're one of the top-rated apps on apps.com. Um, quick ex excerpt from one of our friends um, that you may know, um, Stacy Kildall. If you have contractor clients, they will love this app. Um, she's talking about geofencing and how well it's worked for her at other companies. And uh, we do have a partner program. Um, just quickly touch on this. We do a free account for your firm, a 20% discount for your clients, or you can choose to do a $100 gift card each time uh, to receive a $100 gift card, excuse me, each time you make a referral to us. Uh, so if you want more information on that, um, feel free to reach out to us, 800-828-0689. Uh, um, go to our website, um, look for the partners link at the bottom of the website, or go to forward slash partners, uh, or just email us at hello at clockshark.com. We'd be more than happy to um, do a more in-depth demo for you, spend time on the phone, do some training, um, get you set up in that partner program. That way you have the free account uh, and you can do the 20% discount or get the gift card for doing referrals. So let's get to the demo already, right? Um, 15 minutes uh, for the demo and then we'll do a quick um, Q&A afterward. And um, yes, feel free to also put any questions into the uh, questions box as uh, we are going through the presentation. So let me just get uh, my screen switched over and we will jump into the demo real quick here. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to show you here is what it looks like um, right after you've connected to QBL inside ClockShark. Um, and then once we've looked at that, we'll um, go over and take a look at what the time tracking actually looks like, what timesheets look like, what the mobile app. These are what we call, this is what we call the mapping screen in uh, ClockShark, which is going to show you all of the relationships between items in, in QBL and items in uh, ClockShark. Um, so for example, over here on the left-hand side, you've got the customers and jobs that exist in QBO. Uh, and then on the right, you can see that um, what ClockShark has done is, is we've imported all of those customers and jobs from QBO, and we've created a matching, um, what we call a ClockShark job, which is basically the same thing as a customer or job in QuickBooks. Uh, so we've got a matching ClockShark job uh, that employees can track time to. Okay, um, so every time uh, you add, your client adds a new customer or job over in QBO, um, ClockShark can bring that in automatically and create a matching job. Uh, and that happens on the fly with the sync. Um, you can also set that to work the other way. Um, you do that up here in your QuickBook screen. I'll show you that in a second in ClockShark. Um, you can turn that sync to work the other way so that when you create a new job in ClockShark, uh, whether they do that from the mobile app or do it via the website, that job will automatically flow into QBO as a new job in QBO. Okay, so that can go either way, depending on how you want to set it up. Um, so same thing, similar with employees. Um, you're going to map your uh, QBO employees to your employees in ClockShark. Um, and we have a really nice setup process. I, unfortunately, in this demo account, I can't really show that off. Um, that walks through the initial connection between um, QBO and ClockShark. So it's super easy. Um, when they first uh, do the connection, it's kind of like a wizard that walks through and just asks, says, hey, you have all of these um, customers set up in QBO. Do you want to map them over to ClockShark? Same thing with employees and same thing with services. Okay? And of course, you can come in here anytime and change any of these mapping relationships. So if you want to come in here under the hood and tweak things, change things around, um, you have all of the flexibility in the world to be able to do whatever you need there. Um, very similar with your uh, QuickBooks services. So here's your services from QuickBooks over on the left. And then in ClockShark, we call those a task. So we just have a little bit different name for them in ClockShark, uh, but same thing, okay? And uh, that allows uh, your clients and your clients' employees to track time to both the um, QuickBooks customer and also the uh, QuickBooks service um, so that you have two levels of job costing built in basically. Okay, um, so let me just flip my screen over and I will show you a little bit about of what uh, timesheets look like in ClockShark. Okay, 
Okay, so this screen I'm going to show you first actually is um, called our Who's Working Now screen, which is a real-time view into what is going on out in the field with the employees. So over on the left-hand side here, you have a list of all the employees that are clocked in currently. So we can see here for Russ Simmons, he switched the clock six minutes ago. Okay, if you click on that, um, the row, it's going to show you exactly where on the map that punch came in from. And you can zoom in nice and tight on these. Um, there's also a satellite view over here on the right-hand side that they can toggle over to uh, to see exactly where those punches are coming in from. Uh, this screen will update itself in real time throughout the day. Um, so as employees clock in or out, um, you will see them um, either show up on this screen or drop off the screen. Okay, And in a second here, I will show you what that looks like from the mobile app um, so that you can actually see the screen in use. Why don't I do that now, actually? So you should be seeing the mobile app there up on the screen now. I'm going to put that over on the right here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and clock in. So clocking in from the mobile app is super simple. To clock in, all, their, all the employee in the field is going to do is just tap on the screen and select the job that they're working on. Okay. If your customer has a long list of jobs, it's as simple as just typing in this box and searching for the job that they want, and it'll show them all the matching jobs. So they select the job and then they select the task, which again is the service from QuickBooks, and then they're gonna press the clock in button. If they wanna enter any notes or add a attachment, like a photo or anything like that, they can do that um, both before they clock in and after they clock in. So I'll go ahead and clock in. And like magic, over on the left-hand side of the screen here, you can see that I've been added to the list of employees that are working currently. Okay. It says that I clocked in, shows the time a few seconds ago, it shows the job that I clocked into, which is the 16-5422C BLM. And then it also shows the labor cost code. Okay, again, we call those labor cost codes a task in ClockShark, which corresponds to the QuickBooks service. Okay, and on the map where I clocked in from. Okay, um, so pretty simple. Um, the administrator has control to like clock me out, for example, if the person in the office wanted to force this employee off the clock, they can do stuff like that. Okay. And uh, here's the really cool thing. So as employees are working throughout the day in ClockShark, um, the job costing may change throughout the day. So uh, if the employee needs to switch to a different job, they do not need to clock out first. Uh, all they're going to do is just open up the app. Of course, it's sitting in their pocket, but they're going to pull the app back out. They're going to tap on this. They're going to select the different job that they're working on. They're going to select the new labor cost code. And then they're going to press this button that says switch. Okay. And what that's going to do is basically just end that first segment of time uh, for the first cost codes and create a new segment of time for the new cost codes. So you can see right here, and then that flows into the dashboard instantly. Okay, So that's a um, real quick look at the app, and I'll show you a little bit more of the app in a second. But let me flip over and show you what the completed timesheets actually look like. So this is the uh, view timesheet screen in ClockShark. And um, basically, like I was telling you earlier, it's set up to be super clean, super easy to use. Um, on the left-hand side of the screen, you have a list of all of the employees in the company. Along the top of the screen, you have the calendar for the current work week. Uh, this calendar can be configured to match their, uh, their work week. So, um, for example, if the, uh, their work week starts on a Sunday uh, or a Saturday, I could change this to start on Saturday instead, so it's laid out properly for their payroll period. So as they scroll down through the screen, each one of these yellow boxes is a electronic timesheet. And clicking on any one of these timesheets, which I'll do in a second, is going to show you a more detailed view of what's going on for that uh, inside that timesheet. Uh, on the surface of these, you get some summary information. So for example, up at the top here of Joel's timesheet for Wednesday, it shows that he has 15 hours and 52 minutes. Uh, he started his day at 6.01 a.m ended at 9.53 p.m., and then it's going to show a list of all of the jobs that the employee worked on that day. Okay, so let me go ahead and click on this timesheet show you what it looks like inside. So once I'm inside the timesheet, I can see each individual segment of time that Joel worked for the day. So here he started his day at 6.01 a.m., he ended his day at, se he, uh, at 7, excuse me, at 7.28 a.m., he switched from one job and task to another job and task using that switch button. So you can see here, he stays on the same job, but he switches to a different labor cost code. Okay. So for each one of these times, we have the GPS location recorded. So clicking on the little GPS marker next to the time will show you the location of that time event. 
Okay? And then um, throughout the day, uh, we actually track a location trail also, which is that breadcrumb trail that I was talking about. Um, so you can see here from 827 a.m. to 953 p.m., Joel was actually traveling. We can tell that by his labor cost code. We can also tell that by this GPS trail. So we have this breadcrumb trail basically that runs in between, looks like Southern California and New Mexico. So he did quite a long drive. And then clicking on that uh, trail will show you the various points along the trail and give you kind of an idea of where the employees spent the day. Um, you can also uh, jump over into a week view for Joel. So now we're looking at Joel's entire week. Um, we get a little bit different view at the top with our regular and overtime totals. Uh, we also get a table showing how much time was spent each day on each um, combination of job and task, so for each different cost code combination. Okay, and then scrolling down, we get each individual day throughout the week. Okay, so what if we needed to make a change to one of these times? Okay, that's really easy. Um, so let's say that Joel called in and said, hey, um, there was actually a problem with the cost code that I used on uh, Wednesday. And I'd like you to change that. Okay, just tapping the edit button uh, will allow the administrator to quickly go in and make any changes. Okay, um, I'm not actually going to change this now, uh, but really easy to make those changes. And once you do, let me show you what an edited time looks like. Because there is a full audit trail in the system also. Okay, because after you've gone in and edited some time as somebody in the office, um, you want to have a record of any, you know, obviously for obvious reasons, you want to have a record of any changes that were made to a time so you could kind of go back and look at that stuff later. Um, so there is a full audit trail um, similar to what QuickBooks has in ClockShark. Um, so you can see here's a time segment that's been edited. Okay, so you can see it was edited by Charlotte on Tuesday, 7-11 at 11.14 a.m. And then um, you can view those changes. So this audit log will give you what was actually changed. Uh, whoops, my screen just glitched there for a second. Okay, so um, that's you know looking at a timesheet. Um, there is also a web-based time clock in ClockShark. So if you have um, your clients have employees in the office, not a problem. They can clock in and out from the web. Okay. Um, so it's often you know, pretty common that they'll have maybe one or two administrative people in the office that are also hourly. They want to track them in the same system along with all the field employees. That's not a problem in ClockShark. Um, scheduling. Let me show you the scheduling in ClockShark real quick. So the scheduling is included with the product. Um, it currently does not cost any extra. That might change at some point in the future. Um, but um, let me show you how the scheduling works real quick. So. Um, Real quick and easy, over on the left-hand side here, you get a list of all of the jobs that are in the system. And then over on the right here is basically the schedule board. So you can see this is a pretty busy schedule for this company. They have dragged quite a lot of stuff here onto the schedule. Uh, but scheduling a job, I'll go ahead and schedule one here for myself so you can see what it looks like, is as easy as just dragging and dropping a job onto the schedule. So this is very similar to uh, something like Google Calendar, if you guys are familiar with Google Calendar. Okay. And then coming over to the mobile app, the employee in the field is going to be able to see that schedule in real time in the mobile app. Okay. So any changes that are made um, flow to the mobile app instantly. So let me go ahead and take a look at one of my days on the schedule here. And what I can see inside the schedule is pretty cool. Uh, so I get the address of the job, okay, and that address is going to come over from the address that you enter in QBO. Um, as either the shipping or billing address for that uh, customer. Uh, and you can change that setting in ClockShark um, to use either the billing or shipping address. Okay. You're going to get the job description. This is not something that comes over from QBO, but it's something that can be entered on the ClockShark side. Okay. And then you also get any notes that you've entered about that scheduling event. So for example, when I actually schedule something, um, let me click on something here on the schedule and I'll show you. You can enter notes on the specific scheduling instance and those will show up on the employee's schedule as well. Okay. Um, notifying employees of changes to the schedule is super simple too. So uh, for example, if I want to notify some, um, all of the employees um, that have had schedule updates today, uh, I'm just going to click up here to notify employees. I'm going to say either, uh, I'm going to say today and then I'm going to choose to notify via push notification and or email. Um, usually I'm going to do both and then I'm going to say send notifications. Okay. 
and those notifications will come through to the mobile app right away. Okay. Um, and if everything is working properly here, no, then that notification will come into my mobile app here in just a second. Okay. But in the meantime, so we don't have to wait around for the notification to come through, uh, let me just show you one more thing here on the schedule view. Um, this address that came in, if the employee wants to navigate to the job site, they're just going to hit this navigate button up here at the top right and it will bring up the address for the job in the navigation on the mobile device, which is pretty cool. Uh, customers really like that because it's basically an end-to-end -end system. They enter the job once into QBO, it comes over into ClockShark, they can schedule it, um, the, they can enter a job description in ClockShark, uh, the employee is going to have access to all of that in their mobile app. Um, so in the same place where they can clock in and out for work, they also have access to their schedule with the job address, job description, any notes that uh, the employer has entered for them about what they're supposed to be doing on the job. And they can navigate right to it from the mobile app, uh, which is pretty cool too. Um, so that is a quick overview of uh, the schedule and also of clocking in and out from the mobile app. Um, a couple of the things here on the mobile app real quick. Uh, there's a feature in ClockShark called Crew Clock. Okay, and what crew clock is, is a way for a supervisor or a foreman uh, or any lead person actually out in the field to clock in and out for multiple employees at once. Okay, so this is a feature or a permission um, that they can give to specific employees. Okay, once that employee has been given that permission, um, they're going to have access to this view and then they can clock in and out for multiple employees simultaneously. So what I'm going to do here is choose three employees, which in this test account all happen to be named Cliff, and I'm going to clock in for them. So I've selected a crew of three, it tells me, and I'm going to clock that crew in. And it's just giving me a warning because it says that I was actually already clocked in, so it's going to switch me instead. That's not a problem. So I'm going to select the job that that crew is going to be working on, the labor cost code, of course we call that a task, and then I'm going to say complete clock in. Okay. So that crew of three is now on the clock, and you can see here that uh, there's a timer running that will count up and show how many minutes they've been clocked in. Now, if I wanted to change just one of those employees onto a different cost code, that's not a problem. I don't have to uh, operate on all three of them simultaneously. So let's say I want to switch this one cliff over to a different cost code. It's as simple as just doing that, switching them real quick. Um, super simple. Okay. Um, so that's crew clock, and where that really comes in handy, here's the benefit of crew clock, is that most employees nowadays are carrying smartphones in their pocket, whether it's a company phone or their own personally owned device, and using that for a little bit of personal, a little bit of work stuff. Uh, but we still do have a small percentage of employees that uh, do not have a smartphone. Uh, and most companies that we work with, it's a pretty small percentage. It might be 2 or 3% of employees don't have a smartphone. Uh, or, and the other thing that happens sometimes is you'll have employees show up uh, for work for a day, even though they own a smartphone, they might show up to work that day and they forgot their phone or the battery died or they broke the screen on it, something like that. Uh, crew clock will allow uh, for having a supervisor on every job site or in every crew that has access to clock in other employees. So you can sort of cover up for employees that might not have a smartphone or that show up to work for a day without one. Okay. So that's a pretty cool feature. Um, that's crew clock. Uh, let me also show you what editing a timesheet looks like on the mobile app. Okay. So let's say you have an employee that clocked in and out for work but uh, they got something wrong on it or they want to make an edit to their time. Okay? So this is a permission-based thing. Uh, you can give any specific employee permission to edit their own timesheet. Uh, so some of your clients are going to want this, some of them not so much. Uh, it really just depends on the client. And they can mix and match. So it, you know, if they want to have uh, you know, a set of employees that they give this permission to and then have the rest of the employees not have access to do this, um, it's totally up to uh, them in terms of how they set it up. So editing a timesheet is simple. They're just going to come in, click on it. This is kind of similar to what I showed you in the web. They can make changes to the timesheet, and then they're going to just save those changes. Okay? They can also enter notes, or they can attach a file to the timesheet, okay? um, which comes in handy for photos. Um, other types of documents also, but the primary use right now is, is going to be photos. 
Okay, so that's editing a time. Um, once they've made that edit, it will be marked in the uh, website in the same way as the other timesheet that I showed you, um, where they can see uh, the you know the, there's going to be a permanent record on the timesheet in the web showing who made the edit. So you'll see that it was edited by the employee's name, um, the time, and what they edited. So there will be a full you know even if they do allow employees to make edits to timesheets, there will be a full audit log of all those changes. Um, so they can see what kind of stuff the employees are changing. Um, so that is uh, basically a quick overview of ClockShark. And I know we're coming up on the hour. We've got about five minutes left. So I want to kind of just um, turn things over to a little bit of Q&A. Uh, you may have some questions for Leah on the QBO payroll stuff. You may have some questions for me. Um, so yeah, go ahead and let me go through these questions. And it sounds like Leah's back on too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so Rachel had asked, has pricing been discussed? Um, Rachel, specifically for QuickBooks Online or for the third-party application, um, pricing has been talked about um, for ClockShark. So um, Cliff, if you want to go over pricing again? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Pricing is simple. It's $25 a month base fee for the account, $5 for each employee tracked. Okay, and that includes everything, includes all the support, uh, it's all inclusive. The, uh, and then we do have discounts for when you go over 30 employees. Um, so the product starts getting cheaper per employee at 30 employees. There's some tiers. Um, I won't get into the details of that, but if you have you know, customers with over 30 employees, we have a pricing slider on our website. So you can just go to the pricing page, dial in the number of employees that you have, uh, and it'll give you a price. Awesome. Does anyone else have any further questions um, about ClockShark or even QuickBooks Online Payroll? Um, we've got just a couple minutes left before we go ahead and wrap up. Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions, Cliff, so I'm going to go ahead and say thank you guys so much for spending time with us today. Um, if you guys have any further questions, please feel free um, to reach out. If you need to contact Intuit, um, you can call us at 888-333-3451. Or um, there's also the, the ClockShark PDF slides, and then there's also the slides that I provided as well. So thanks again, everybody, for attending. Cliff, thank you so much for, for staying with us and uh, demoing this awesome product. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it, Leah. And by the way, one thing I didn't show is the export over into QBO, but it's basically one click and it's going to move all your timesheets right over into QBO uh, and then they're ready to run payroll. So I forgot to touch on that point. That's kind of an important part, but um, <laughs> yeah, okay. appreciate, <laughs> appreciate the opportunity to <laughs> present. And uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to call us anytime. We're here. Our support's awesome and we love talking with people. So it's 800-828-0689.